In 1937, at the height of the Spanish Civil War, British journalist John Langdon Davis comes across a child with a note hanging around the neck, calling on whoever finds a boy to take care of him. The war correspondent answers to the call, and with that, Plan International is born. With the impact of its intervention spreading across nations and continents, 37 years ago, the organization once again answered the call to better children's lives in Kenya. In the colonial days, there were no NGOs of the kind that we have today. These NGOs with huge resources and experience from their mother countries became very important in the fight against diseases, ignorance, and all those problems that the African leadership at the time defined as a serious problem. And that's how Plan International, among others, came into this country. The story of Plan International in Kenya begins in Embu in the year 1982. It is a story of hope, transformation, and creating resilience within communities. Uh, when the Plan International started working in the area in the early 80s, uh, there was a baseline that was conducted then, which identified some uh, areas where children were facing major issues, such uh, were in the area of uh, education. There was a lot of poverty in the community, in the area of health and nutrition, and also in livelihoods. At the center of Plan International's programming were sponsored children who are the link between the communities and the donors. The sponsored children and the immediate families would benefit directly, and on the other hand, the greater community would benefit through various communal projects that were initiated through the sponsorship. When Plan International uh, came to Kenya, that is in 1982, it started its programming work in my county, that is uh, Embu County, by then it was Embu District. And actually the activities that were rolled out were first of all started in my primary school, which is Kangaro Primary School, way back in the 1982. And that is when uh, me and a number of my other neighbors and uh, village mates were enrolled into Plan. Mbere is among the first regions that experienced Plan International's interventions in Kenya. This largely semi-arid region was facing numerous challenges in health, education and access to clean drinking water. We were fetching water very far away, very far, about five kilometers from our homesteads. We used to carry one container of 20 liters of water Five kilometers, one container. The water was not even enough to be used at home. Even for the animals, it was not even sufficient. When plan came in, actually that saved the situation. It drilled the boreholes, and whereby almost in every village, even if you don't get two boreholes, you could get one borehole. So in every sublocation, you could have about two or three boreholes. We appreciate the work that they did. The water was no wastage because they did the renovation even inside the tank. The plan from the onset emphasized on bringing water to the people through digging dams, through uh, bringing piped water to, to their households, which really went to solve a lot of problems. At least people could be able to grow crops around their houses uh, because there was water. And the animals, which, were, meant, which meant a lot to, to the communities then, goats and cows, you know, if they did not have them, if you know, they died because of lack of water, then they did not have any, any livelihoods at all. So PLAN contributed uh, tremendously in uh, ensuring that the lives of people uh, were uplifted in that sense. By the year 1982, the health infrastructure in Embu, like many parts of the country, was not properly developed. Most affected were communities that were in far-flung areas where access was a challenge. For PLAN International, 
providing community members, especially women and children, with healthcare services was a priority. In many instances, this called for improvisation. This Mogumo tree in Kabuguri holds lots of memories. Under it, Plan International delivered health services to community members in makeshift mobile dispensaries in the 1980s. These health clinics were a lifesaver once every month. Today, beside this tree stands a permanent dispensary that was constructed in the 1990s through the support of Plan International. Yet, even with the efforts that were being put in place to improve access to health, women and children in far-flanked corners still had a challenge in accessing medical services. Most at risk were expectant women who would often give birth in the absence of professional birth attendants. To counter this challenge, community health volunteers, including traditional birth attendants, were trained to become the first line of defense for expectant women in the villages. Mm. As efforts were being made to improve health service delivery in the villages of Embu, at the Embu Level 5 Referral Hospital, there was a crisis for children and expectant women that needed urgent attention. The focus shifted into improving mother and child facilities at the then district hospital. Embu Level 5 uh, Hospital. I was in charge of that hospital since uh, 1989. And by 1990, we came into uh, some kind of a friendship with the Plan International Embu then. And uh, each day we had close to 50 children in that ward. A bed, of, a bed capacity of 17, holding 50, three times. And they were not amused by the kind of congestion that we had. And they promised uh, they would source for money, and they did. And by two or three, they had already built um, a, a children's ward that uh, was about 72 beds away from 17 beds. And it really uh, decongested the hospital in terms of children uh, care. In three years, up to two or five, we were able to build a maternity complex that is one of the best in, 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 in Kenya, uh, with 144 beds, all the way from a 40-bed maternity ward. By the end of the 1980s, the direct benefits approach that had been initiated in Embu had brought immense transformation within the community. Schools had been constructed where none existed and those in a poor state got a new lifeline through renovations. Njia Special Needs School is among the institutions that benefited immensely. Before, uh, the year in Impiandi learners never used to go to secondary school, especially in the Omeru North. But when this school was started, I remember, even after Plan International had intervened, building the classes, the dormitories and all this. In 1990, we had our first class for KCPE. And I can tell you in 1990, our first class for KCPE was number nine in the whole country compared with other schools for the deaf. And all the children who were in standard eight, they were able to go to secondary. Plan International also built um, an ideological room and they equipped the room actually with a, a clinical ondiometer that we used it to test hearing impairment or the hearing losses for learners so that we can be able to place them into, into the schools or refer them to ENT clinics for medical help or surgical help so that they can be supported. The late 80s and early 1990s saw the expansion of Plan International's direct benefits program approach to other regions including Taita, Kwale, Kelifi, and Kisumu. Miradi ili ofanyo na plani walipoingia village hii wakataka mkutano wa community ili waeleze rate ya under five inonyesha katika hii location wanakufa sana. Sasa tumekuja, tuja tujaribu pamoja na nyinyi tujaribu kutatua hili tatizo. However, 
As beneficiary children are being recruited into the sponsorship program, there were challenges along the way. Ile shirika linafanya registration kwa mtoto, apigwe picha, picha hii iende ngambo. Sasa huko ndiko ambapo kutakuwa na wale wafadhili ambao watakuwa wanaleta pesa za ile miradi. Sasa wakati tunapiga picha hawa hii community kawa inakataa. Inasema hawa fulani wanataka kuibia watoto wao. Wanataka picha zipigwe waibe watoto. The first enrollment we did in Kwale was 1500 children. Of course with a lot of challenges. Challenges were that um, boys were regarded uh, as uh, more important than girls. So you will call an enrollment exercise and parents will bring boys only. Uh, then we sat down and we found out that no, we have to, uh, to find another way or strategies to, to ensure that we get girls also. Uh, we decided to go uh, to do door-to-door -door enrollment and that's when we found girls. With the challenges addressed, Plan International and community members embarked on a journey to transform children's lives and the communities within which they lived. Households and livelihoods improved, schools were constructed, health facilities improved, and clean drinking water was brought nearer to the communities. Plan International, nilipokuja mtsangatamu, sisi ndio tulikuwa sponsored child. Kibinafsi, masoma ya menisaidia. Kwa sabu... Nimesoma, paka saa hii naongea, nimekuwa, nimeajiriwa, nafanya kazi kwa watu wa ofisi ya CDF ya Matuga. Uh, in 1998, when I started for my KSP, I received a calling letter to Terezani Primary School, sorry, Second School. But then my parents were unable to pay for me the school fees there. So it took the intervention of the officers of Plan International by then, through my brother, who was a, a sponsored child. They took my problems to Plan International, and Plan International agreed and to pay for me school fees. Through their support, I am now employed as a teacher. And uh, I have also come back to my school, to helping my, my, my brothers as a head teacher. Plan International phased out its programming for Taita in the year 1996, having worked in the community since 1985. Yet, the projects that the organization initiated here in the 80s and 90s are still up and running. The Wundanyi Sub-County Hospital's maternity wing stands as a testimony to the organization's work. This block was uh, built by uh, Plan International, started in the year 93 towards 94, early 94. It was handed over around April. Then there was no any other dispensary around. So it was important in terms of upscaling the, the hospital deliveries and a lot of outcomes improved. The mortalities also disappeared from then. In the villages of Taita, families that benefited from the intervention still vividly remember how their lives were transformed. Many years down the line, a visit to the village reveals households that still hold on to some cherished possessions. Dairy cows from the lineage of cows that were distributed to sponsored children's families. Shirika la plan international lipo ingia mahali hapa. Hasa lilikuwa likitafuta wale watoto ambao ni nyonge kabisa na kuwaboresha katika maisha yao. Tulianzia hata na miradi ya kujenga gala nyumba hivyo baadaye ndio plani kaonelea kwamba sasa kitu cha kumsaidia mtu huyo wa chini ni tumpatie ngombe na tulipopewa hizo ngombe tulipewa ngombe tatu hizi ngombe tukawa ikizaa ndamu wa kwanza utapia mwenzako mimi nikawa mmoja wao nikapata hiyo ndama ningailea kwa muda ikakuwa I've worked with Plan for over 30 years. I started working with Plan Taita in the late 1980s. I actually witnessed communities being transformed firsthand. And actually, I'm happy to realize that after many years of Plan Exit, I, we, I can still find 
projects in Taita, working and running and still benefiting uh, Taitas. In Kilifi, the community-led total sanitation project transformed the outlook of villages that in the past had never appreciated the use of toilets. Kwanza kulikuwa kona ugonjwa wa kuhara na kutapika na utapia mulo pia na tukachunguza tukaona ya kwamba upungufu wa vyo ume uko chini. Today villages boast of being open defecation free areas with every homestead having a decent pit latrine. Until when uh, there were these awareness, uh, uh, awareness sessions that were, uh, took place in those communities and eventual uh, construction of these, uh, of these uh, toilets, there was a change of mindset such that they, they would value uh, that uh, uh, going to, to uh, having a toilet at home is important. And in, in, a, in a way, it reduced the, uh, the waterborne diseases that uh, were prevalent in, in these communities. Shirika la plane dilipoingia tuletea hata heshima kwa sababu sasa tuna heshima mgeni akiingia pale kwenye nyumba tunamuonyesha kwamba ile ni nyumba ambayo anaweza kwenda kujisaidia Back in Embu residents of an entire slum were relocated to better housing units in Majimbo which were constructed by the community members through support from Plan International Plan ni watu bere dimiti na ni watu retere machini in Kisumu, schools were built, roads renovated, and water projects initiated in beneficiary communities. By the year 2000, Plan International had made its mark in Kenya. However, it was time to shift gears from a direct benefits approach to a rights-based approach. This focused on strengthening community institutions with an aim of building long-lasting foundations within the communities that would be the anchor point for children's rights in the future. We transited from direct benefit to the influencing aspect because of the realization that uh, plan as an organization could not meet all the community needs and that it required uh, the intervention of the duty bearer who is the government to also participate fully in terms of providing those services that the community required. As a result, communities were encouraged to form groups that would lead the development agenda as well as champion for the rights of children and community members. We felt there was a very big need for the community to be mobilized, to come together, to be rallied towards uh, this uh, a certain goal. And that goal, of course, came from themselves. We sensitized them that plan is a non-governmental organization which has just come to help us improve our livelihoods. Village loans and savings groups were initiated across the program areas. Community-based organizations were now at the forefront of championing for development initiatives. In Embu, community members initiated the Njokiri Ndambo irrigation project that was helping to improve livelihoods. In Kilifi, the clean drinking water projects brought water closer to community members. In Kisumu, agricultural livelihood projects were helping to improve food security. When we first faced in, in uh, Maseno in Kisumu, uh, rural, that was around Kombewa. This area was almost a semi-arid place. There was challenges of water, there was low immunization of children, the, the tree cover in the area was low. But we see, we invested in these areas and made a difference. We really uh, concentrated on mobilizing the community, getting the community to understand why we are here, 
getting the community to understand what is ailing them themselves, what areas they are failing in, what needs to be done by themselves for them to be able to get out of uh, uh, the problems they are facing. So for us, uh, what we did is, uh, first of all, uh, raise awareness that whatever we are doing, we are doing it together. It's not us bringing uh, this classroom, no. It's you are putting up the classroom yourself with our support. The 2010s saw Plan International putting more emphasis on working with and championing for the rights of girls. Girls and women are most vulnerable and often left behind in development agendas. When I first took over the position, I think I, one of the things that I said is that I want us to be the to-go-to organization. I want us to be the to-go-to organization when it comes to advancing children's rights and equality for girls. I want us to occupy that space fully. I want us to have the confidence to influence and advocate working with girls and young people, working through local partners, and where necessary, disrupt if that is going to bring the change that we need. As a result, much attention has been put on improving access to education for girls, ending violence against all children, and championing for equality between girls and boys. The issues that girls are facing are very complex and require multisectoral and uh, response plan and requires many partners who are like-minded to work together. I also want us to be the thought leader in specific areas where we know we do very well. We've learned a lot after 37 years of working at the community. We know what works and we know what does not work. And so we want to build on that. We want to make sure that plan is occupying the space that it has always occupied and will occupy even within this more nuanced approach around girls' rights and around influencing and advocacy. Girls' access to education was improved through projects such as the Bicycles for Education project. In Kisumu, Bondo, Kilifi and Kwale, child protection units were established and children and community members empowered on children's rights. The journey of Plan International in Kenya has been great, the milestones and successes immeasurable. Its impact on communities cannot be erased. The voices of gratitude from community members is a clear indication. <laughs> Asante Plan International. Yet the journey still continues. Asante Sana, Plan International.